Okay, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, two reminders, if you can please silence your cell phones, and also, if time permits, we will have time for one-on-ones uh, following the conclusion of the presser. We'll start with opening remarks from Jake Wisham, Planetary Director of Athletics, Bernard Muir, who will then introduce our Bradford M. M Freeman Director of Football, Troy Taylor, and then we'll open up for questions at that time. I'll turn it over to Bernard. Thank you, Brian. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'd like to read from prepared remarks uh, to make sure I don't forget anything. Before I introduce our new coach, I want to thank several people who have made this search and hiring possible. First and foremost, I'd like to thank our campus leadership, specifically President Tessie Levine and Provost Drell. They have been constant supporters of our athletics program and empowered us to act expeditiously to find and hire the right fit for Stanford. I'd also like to thank members of our search committee, which included representation from our Stanford Board of Trustees, faculty, campus and athletics leadership, our Office of General Counsel, as well as former football players. Though I'll not go into specifics about the individuals who served on this committee, I can tell you their feedback and guidance throughout this process has been invaluable. I'd also like to thank Deputy Athletics Director Tommy Gray, who serves as our sport administrator for our football program and was an integral part of this search process. Finally, I'd like to thank our tremendous football coaches and staff who have continued to work and recruit tirelessly through this transition. Their passion for this university was evident during the, this uncertain time, these last couple weeks, and I could not be more grateful for their efforts. After we learned of Coach Shaw's resignation, we quickly embarked on a path to find our next head coach. We spoke with countless program stakeholders to gather feedback, which shaped our ideal candidate profile. The process serves as a refreshing reminder of the power of the Stanford football network. And I'd like to express my gratitude to the football coaches, the executives, the general managers, current and former student athletes, uh, football student athletes, and so many others who lended their assistance and feedback throughout this entire process. While I'll, I'll not divulge the specifics of our candidate pool, I will share that our committee was very pleased with the volume and quality of interested candidates that this opening attracted. As we set out about the work of evaluating candidates, Troy's credentials stood out among the group. The turnaround he led at Sacramento State is truly remarkable. And his seven, 789 winning percentage as a collegiate head coach certainly jumps off the page. When members of our committee began speaking with connections in the football world, the fervor and enthusiasm with which they spoke about Troy was very intriguing. However, it wasn't until we had the chance to visit with Troy and to feel his genuine passion for the game of football and his deep care and commitment to the student athletes entrusted in, into his leadership that we realized we had found Stanford's football's next leader. As Troy shared his coaching and player development philosophy with, with us, our committee quickly understood that he, had, he has the chance to accomplish special things here on the farm. Stanford is a place where individuals can come to pursue their fullest potential, and that doesn't stop with our, just our students. Our athletics department has a deep tradition of developing coaches with, without power conference head coaching experience. From Bill Walsh to Jim Harbaugh and many throughout other sports here at Stanford, this is a place where coaches with the right tools and mindset can develop it into incredible leaders. I couldn't be more excited for our student athletes to get to know Troy, to experience his leadership not only on the football field, but throughout their lives. It is my pleasure to introduce the 35th head coach in Stanford football history, Troy Taylor. Troy, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I just want to uh, say a few thank yous. Uh, President Tessier Levine, um, Provost Drell, and uh, Bernard Muir for believing in me and uh, uh, handing this program over for me to lead uh, and believe that I'm the right guy for the job. Um, the search committee was incredible. Um, really appreciate what they've done. I also want to thank David Shaw for the what he's done for this university and this football program. The players that he's brought in are first class. Um, I've had an opportunity to speak with a lot of them, and they did an unbelievable job recruiting the very best in all fields. Um, and then my wife, Tracy, and my family um, for the constant support and belief that, um, that this was important and, and something that, that we could do. Um, we've moved around a little bit, um, and we found our final destination, which is really exciting. 
um, I'd like to, to thank Sacramento State for the opportunity that I had there and uh, to lead me to this place. So um, the usually the first question is why, why Stanford? And to me, it's, it's very clear. Um, there's no other place that I'd rather be than right here. Um, Stanford offers the opportunity to bring in the brightest, the best, um, and to win on and off the field. Um, when, you, when you say the name Stanford, people don't ask what, which Stanford or what Stanford. They know what you're talking about all over the world. It attracts the very best. Um, student athletes come, come here, know that they're going to be challenged both academically and on the field. Um, and you, when you draw that kind of uh, clientele, that type of player, that type of person, I, I don't know how you can't be successful. So I'm very excited about that. I um, had an opportunity to speak with um, our student athletes in a team meeting, and I'm on, uh, speaking with them individually, every one of them, and they're remarkable. And you know that the Stanford student athlete is going to be remarkable when you sit down and you speak with them and you really get to know them. You see the light in their eyes and what they're all about. Um, you realize why this place is special. And it's special because of the people. The degree is powerful. All those things, uh, the, the, all those things that come with the Stanford degree and the notoriety and respect. But it's really the people that make this place special. It draws the brightest and the best um, and to be able to circulate and communicate and lead and learn from all these people is something that is absolutely a dream come true. Um, how we're going to build this program, it's really simple. Um, it's built with love. We lead with love. Um, and a, a fervent belief and passionate belief in what we're doing, a love of Stanford, a love of each other, a love of our coaches, a love of competition, a love of football. Um, these, these, these student athletes here, they love football as much as they love going to school. They want to excel and be great at all of those things. Um, and our job is to lead with love. Love is the most powerful force in the world. Um, there's fear that's pretty powerful and there's love that is more powerful. Uh, you can change the world with love. That human connection, that belief in somebody and belief in a group of people. Some people will tell you that fear <coughs> is more powerful than love. and you know, we've probably all been scared in this room, and it'll make you do some incredible things. But love is more powerful. Um, and, and if you, you want to argue about that, I would. I would say most of you, if you have children, would run into a burning building to save your child. So love can change the world. It can change people, and it can change our football program. So we are looking for, for student athletes that absolutely love football and love Stanford and are going to love each other. Um, if that leads us, I don't think we'll ever go wrong. Um, and we want everybody in our program to come back. Every student athlete that is on our football team, we are inviting them back. You have a place here. Um, whether you've played one snap, whether you've been a starter, whether you're a nationally recognized player, or if you're injured, we want every player back on because they're extraordinary and that's why they're here. So <coughs> I've already offered an invitation to every single player on our team to stay and be a part of what we're going to build. Stanford has been great in areas all over, including football, and we can do it again. Um, some people don't think that Stanford is set for the new college football environment and climate. I would disagree. I think we're perfectly positioned. Do we need to make some adaptations and be agile and adjustments? Absolutely. That's what good people do, and we have the brightest people here at Stanford. So we'll make the adjustments, but we will not lose our dignity, our integrity, and what's most important to us is our student athletes, their experience, graduating and having an unbelievably, remarkably great experience. Um, we will be champions here. I don't know when it will happen, but we will be champions, um, and I'm really excited to get started. Any questions? We do have mics on both sides of the room, okay. so please raise your hand uh, and we'll get to you. And just a reminder, if you can identify yourself and the outlet you're representing. Andrew Hobner with uh, CBS News out of Sacramento, Troy. Good, good to see you. Good in the hat. Um, when it came to finding a head coaching job at this level, I know you've talked about how much Sacramento is home to you um, to find a place that is as close to Sacramento as Stanford is on behalf of your family. How much did that factor into the decision that of all the jobs that were out there and made available to you this cycle, this was the one? Absolutely. There was no... Uh, for, for me, it was very clear, you know, um, this was the place that I wanted to be. Um, I've known St about Stanford and the type of people that it attracts and the people that have been through here and what they stand for, and it was a perfect fit for me. To me, I love winning. I, I do, but 
it's got to be done in the right way and it's got to be able to draw the right people and have sustained success in all areas and i don't think there's any place in the in the country that offers what stanford can offer after meeting the search committee and getting to talk to mr muir and uh, i knew that this was the right place in fact i knew when i asked him i needed if i took the job i needed to finish what i had started at sacramento state and he didn't hesitate and that's when i knew that uh, this was the right man to work for and this place has integrity and they just don't talk about integrity they they live it so um, I couldn't be more thrilled. Uh, this is my final destination, the final chapter in my coaching life, and uh, hopefully it'll be for a very long time, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. What's up, Troy? Hey, Cameron Sarna from 24-7 Sports. I know there's been a lot of talk about NIL and, and stuff like that. I know you mentioned it. How do you plan on navigating that? I know you also said you're welcoming the whole team back. So just yeah. what's the process like just kind of getting started and hitting the transfer portal potentially or – signing kids and getting guys to stay committed well uh, you know college football has changed more in the last three years than it probably has in 40 or 50 years so uh, navigating through that is is something that you need to take your time and we got really smart people we'll adjust to all of that i can say this there is nothing more important than to us than taking care of our student athletes here their experience how they do in the classroom, the support they get, that they can be champions on the field, uh, and we'll do what's right by them and, and still do it in a way that uh, holds up the integrity and dignity of Stanford University. Director Josh Dubow from Associated Press, congratulations. Thank you. Um, when you left Folsom 2015, was Coming up, Power Five coach, something that was a goal of yours, and you said, "What? How has that journey been? It's been, obviously been a pretty rapid rise from yeah. High it's, school to, to it's definitely been the the road less traveled, and you know, but if you look at kind of where I've been, it's pretty clear that um, it had nothing to do with with money or contracts. I mean, um, that's pretty clear. Um, I've never chased that. Um, for me, it's been following my bliss. Um, I love working with student athletes. I, I love coaching football. I love competing. And so for me, it's always been about being at the right place, uh, feeling that you can do it the right way. And so, um, you know, I was at Folsom for quite a while and we had a lot of success with some unbelievable people there. And then when I was offered the job uh, by Bo Baldwin, who is the head coach at Eastern Washington, um, it was a great opportunity that we took the family up. Um, I wouldn't be here without Bo. And, um, you know, there's not many people that would hire a high school football coach to come up and run an offense of one of the best FCS teams in the country. So uh, Bo is a special guy, and he, um, he's the one that gave me the opportunity. It was an unbelievable experience. It took me through um, Utah and Coach Witt giving me that opportunity. I learned a ton there. And then Mark Orr in Sacramento State. Um, and the incredible coaching staff I, I have there. So it's the road less traveled, but it's, it's, it has made all the difference. And um, I'm at an unbelievable place that I feel at home, um, and uh, I can't wait to get started. I've already gotten started, but I can't wait to move forward. Stuart, Connor, Ben. Hi, Troy. Stuart Mandel with The Stuart. Athletic. Um, how, would you, how do you describe your offense? to people who didn't watch the 66-63 game. <laughs> and how do you plan to install it at a, a you know with these players who were recruited obviously for a much different system? Yeah, I would say to describe it we're dynamic. Um, you know, offensive football is about finding space, creating space and different ways of doing it. Um, we want to create as much anxiety for our opponent, our defense, as possible, and um, that's doing a lot of different things. And I won't get into the schematic, schematics too much, but dynamic, aggressive, again, we are not fear-based. We're going to attack. We're not worried about making mistakes. We're, we're going out and striving or driven for the desire to be successful in our enjoyment. Um, now, it's very flexible as well. You know, we've had quarterbacks in the system that were dual-threat quarterbacks, and we had quarterbacks that were pure drop-back guys. There's great players everywhere, and there's great players that, that have the acumen to come to Sac uh, Stanford and, and be successful both in the classroom and on the field. So um, we'll be flexible with the athletes we have. I've always, as a, as a high school coach, um, you, you have to adjust to what you have. And so been, uh, I think we've been very adept at doing that, of being able to uh, you know, utilize different people's skills. So getting our hands on those guys, seeing what they do well, highlight what they do well, and the system is flexible enough to utilize you know, all the different skills. Hi, Coach. Michelle Dapper, KCRA. Hi, Michelle. Good to see you. Um, you said you got started already. Talk to us about maybe Saturday's visit with the players. Yeah. And also, how fortunate do you feel 
that you know you know the NorCal talent. There's some special talent in this region, and just for you to know that talent and hopefully to bring that to Stanford. Yeah, well, you, I think you can always tell what's important to a person for what their priorities are and how they spend their time doing it. So the, the first order of business, um, the last two days have all been about our players here at Stanford. So able to have a team meeting, and see their faces, and uh, some, you know, with the new uh, new way we work, and some of them are on Zoom because they're they're out of town. Um, but it was great reaching them, telling them what my vision, extending that invitation, uh, because you know, trying to calm the waters. It's when you don't have a, a head coach after having so much stability for a long time that can create a lot of anxiety. And so letting them know, I think the first thing I told them was, you know, extending an invitation to them to be a part of our football program that I want them back. And then everything went from there. After that, um, I've spent um, most of the last two days meeting with every single player, learning about them, uh, what their dreams and aspirations are, what they're looking for, and how can I help them be successful. The goal is really simple. It's We want them to graduate with this degree. That's the number one goal. There is no close number two goal. That's the number one goal. The second goal is for them to have an unbelievable experience here, and that means their time, their interacting with their, their fellow teammates, their coaches, uh, the students and student athletes on campus, the faculty, the alumni, all of those things are extraordinary here at Stanford, and they need to take advantage of those things. And part of that experience is winning. We want to win. We love to win. And they have they've attempted to win at everything their entire life. So um, that's really the goal, and then to maximize their potential. And so it's really simple. And how do you do that? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but the main part, uh, point of departure is them knowing that you care about them, uh, that you love them, uh, and, and then giving them the tools that they need and, and, and their belief in you that you can lead them to get them better. If you have those things and you have some uh, competency and a little creativity, um, I live in the realm of possibility. I think anything's possible. I go into every situation thinking it's gonna gonna work, and then if it's not working, then we adapt and adjust. Uh, we got great people here. We got the brightest minds in the world, students, faculty, uh, administration, all of those things. Um, there's no reason why we can't have incredible success here on a sustained basis. Uh, Troy Connor Letourneau, San Francisco Hi, Chronicle. I'm sure you've already heard some some cracks about the Cal connections, um, <laughs> but uh, how do you how do you feel like your experience at Cal and with this rivalry uh, kind of helps prepare you for this? Yeah, I, and uh, Cal's forged the person I am. I mean, it's been a big part of it. Um, you know, you got, you come in as an 18 year old teenager and leave when you're whatever 21, 22, and um, those experiences really uh, help create who you are and how you see the world. And so, uh, forever grateful to Cal. It was an unbelievable experience. I do think it has helped me prepare for this moment. Um, the student athletes at Cal and Stanford and institutions that um, really strive to be great academically and emphasize that, it attracts a different type of student athlete. And so, um, I rub shoulders with those those guys um, every day as a, as a student athlete at Cal. And so, um, excited to be here, uh, excited to continue. It's a great rivalry. It's one of the oldest rivalries. And, um, excited to, to compete against Cal. Ben Parker, uh, cardinalsportsportscom slash rivals.com. Um, coach, just want to get your thoughts on how you feel your time as an offensive coordinator at Utah has prepared you for this yeah. position, being an OC in the conference before, just how that's helped you, you know, mold you into the coach you are today. Yeah, and I spent some time as assistant coach at Cal, and obviously it was uh, Pac-10, it's Pac-12 now. Um, the time at, at Utah was invaluable um, to be able to learn how they do things, and Coach Whitty's he's done it for a long time, and they've been very successful. Um, there's different ways to do it, different philosophies, so um, that was great. And then obviously just being an offensive coordinator and uh, what people do defensively and uh, the challenges that go into that, I think it's really important. Um, that being said, I think football's football. You're still working with uh, young men that um, uh, have the same aspirations and, and desires and wants and um, you know, questioning themselves and all those things in terms of their ability. Everybody stuff, you know, challenge, have those challenges. So um, I think all my experiences have been really important. Um, it, frankly, in the high school level, um, it's kind of where, where I became a, a coach because I really learned to coach to different levels and how to get the most out of student athletes and believe in them and, um, and, and, and how to build a culture. Uh, those are things that are really important. I think this game is, is all about culture, which is relationships um, and, and building a belief in yourself and a belief in your teammates and the system. 
and then uh, going out with a great level of confidence. And all my uh, all my stops have been very vital in my development. Troy, um, after right in the middle here. Oh, there sorry. You go. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> after Friday night's game, you know, you mentioned you're gonna take some time, sleep before yeah. you know the whirlwind of Saturday began. In, in that period between that game against UIW ending and, and you kind of beginning this chapter here, what, what reflections did you have just about your time in Sacramento and, and with that class of seniors and, and those kids especially, given all that you guys accomplished there the last few years? Yeah, you know, obviously emotional to leave a place that I really love and there's a special place to me. Um, and to come here and have a new challenge and be at a place that I, I really have a, an unbelievable amount of respect for. Um, you know, there's obviously emotional turmoil, and then you add the fact that, you know, every season you lose seniors. That senior class is unbelievable. They lost one Big Sky game in their career when we were there, um, and they were phenomenal. They really changed the climate of that place and that university and that city in some ways. Um, and so I'm going to miss those guys. I maintain the relationship. They all have my phone number and anything I can do uh, to help my student athletes and help Sacramento State moving forward until we play them in game two. Um, I, I'm there to, to help with the transition. Troy, and then we have two up top. Yeah. Hey, Coach. Uh, Troy Clarity, uh, the Troy. TreeCast podcast. Great to see another Troy in the building. <laughs> uh, you mentioned a few moments ago that more has changed about college football in the last yeah. four or five years than in the last 40 or 50, and certainly a lot has changed overall in the last two years. How have the last couple of years maybe affected or maybe forced, to adapt, forced you to adapt your coaching style? And secondly, you know, what kind of coaching style do you have with your, with your staff as far as a CEO type or hands-on, every single day yeah. game plan? Uh, th those kinds of things. What are, what are your thoughts about that? That's a, it's a great question. It's a, it's a layered question. Um, the, so here, here's the great thing. Yes, it has changed quite a bit, you know, and we all know the areas that it's changed at and uh, the ability and flexibility for student athletes to, to leave and try another place uh, for whatever reason. Um, so now more than ever, it's about relationships and creating a culture uh, that people want to be a part of. I still think people are drawn more to incredible environments that they feel valued, respected, and challenged um, than maybe some other shiny objects. And um, I think you will draw the right people here to Stanford. I think they've done that for a really long time. Now, do you have to adapt and adjust? Yes, you have to. Um, and we will adapt and adjust. Um, but uh, the culture part, I think it becomes even more important that somebody can come here and feel like a family. Think about when you go home you know, you like going home because people accept you for who you are, right? And we're all different. Um, this has got to be a place that they feel they're at home, that they're valued and accepted for who they are, because we're all different and unique. Um, and so if you create that kind of environment and, and you're authentically those things that I talk about, um, I think you will draw people that have those similar beliefs. And so I think you just uh, be louder with who you are in terms of your values and your culture, and you will attract and keep people staying. Because at the end of the day, we want all of our student athletes to come here, get their degree, and stay and complete their, um, their athletic career here. Um, I am hands-on. I will run the offense. I'll call the plays. Um, you know, obviously, as a, as a head coach, I'm, I'm pretty good at multitasking. So um, I have to, to obviously lead as the head coach and be involved in every aspect. I'm a person that's involved in everything. Um, we'll hire a great defensive coordinator and uh, let him do his thing, do him micromanage. Good people don't like to be micromanaged. So we'll get an extraordinary defensive coordinator and uh, support him. And we're going to play with the fervor, excitement, and love that's never been seen before. And uh, that'll make attract players to come play for us and want him to stay. We have the mic here. Then we'll go up top for two. We'll come back there. Hey, welcome, Coach. Pablo Neola, Stanford Daily, KZSU Radio. Um, sort of piggybacking on sort of that last answer, as you look to build that staff, what attributes are you kind of looking in as you consider different candidates for the different assistant positions? And sort of how do you think about the value of maybe maintaining some continuity to what's been a pretty stable and successful era of Stanford football versus maybe wanting to bring in your own guys? It's a great question. There's really good coaches, uh, the, the staff here, um, and interviewed them all and spoke with them all. Very good people, very good coaches. Um, that being said, it's about the right fit and putting the right dynamics together. One of my mentors is uh, Chris Peterson, and you know he talks a lot about staff and what he's looking for. And uh, I've really connected with the fact that high integrity, 
um, high output, low ego. And those are the things that we're, we're really looking for. So the ante to become a coach here is you got to have high integrity. You got to um, be a hard worker and, and low ego. And, uh, and, and you got to be a competent in what you're doing. And you got to care about the kids. Um, the rest of the stuff is, is, is pretty negotiable in terms of scheme and all those things. Uh, we want guys that are on a, a continual quest to get better, do not think they've arrived, to be humble and hungry, always learning. I'm not a finished product. Um, I can become a better coach. I've got to become a better coach. And that's part of what humility is. Humility is believing that you can do better and you can give more. Um, and that's going to be our staffs. Um, we're going to uh, really be a moniker of, of, of getting better and improving, being creative and giving our guys a chance to be successful, uh, both in the classroom and on the field. Congratulations, Coach. Kirsten Keller with Fox 40. Hey, um, Coach, can you talk about the moment that you did find out where you were and what that was like and what did you do to celebrate? Um, it's a good question. You know, um, it was an exciting moment. I was in my office and um, I think I did a fist pump and tried to act like I was calm and cool. Um, but uh, yeah, those moments are great and um, it's a special time. I mean, the, the reality of uh, being able to come to Stanford University and lead the football program is, is a daunting, uh, you know, humbling, all those things that people talk about. Um, but it stirs me, it, uh, it excites me. Um, I really feel I'm at home and, uh, and we have everything we need here. Now we gotta, and it talks cheap, we gotta, we gotta get to work. And uh, really excited to get to work. Hi Troy, right next to Kirsten. Kate Rooney with Cron4 in San Francisco. How do you view Stanford's place or role in the Pac-12, if you will, with all the looming changes in the conference? Yeah, I think, well the great thing is, is Stanford's gonna remain Stanford. Um, and so obviously the affiliation with the Pac-12 conference has been for a long time. Um, and uh, I trust our leadership that, and where we're headed, wherever that is. Um, but we are always going to be Stanford, uh, which is an unbelievable experience for our student athletes, putting them first, um, really uh, emphasizing uh, their experience in the classroom and being champions on the field. Stanford's been the most successful sports department, I think, in the country. Um, in terms of being winning and producing uh, really high caliber student athletes and still winning championships. So Stanford's not gonna change. That's, uh, uh, you know, college football will change, sports will change, but the, of who Stanford is and what they stand for and what we stand for um, and how we go about doing those things, we'll make it adaptations and adjustments, but um, that's the great thing about a place like this is it's, it's, it stood the test of time uh, because its foundation is so strong. Coach, having your ties with Folsom and the quarterback, Ari, uh, being a Folsom guy, how familiar are you, are you with him? And uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, Ari Patu, yeah. I you know, got, got to see him play a lot in, in high school. Um, never really spent too much time evaluating him because I knew he was kind of out of our grasp. He's a special kid. I'm so excited to work with all of our quarterbacks. There's some really special people here. Um, and we will be all about competition. I'm very competitive. It's one of my probably foundational personality parts is, is I love to compete and win. Um, and so uh, everybody will get a fair opportunity um, to come in here and compete. And uh, we're going to need more than just the starters. We're going to need uh, backup players. We're going to need scout team players. We're going to need everybody to accomplish what we want. And Stanford football is not a silo. We want to involve everybody, um, our faculty, our alumni, um, our past um, players that have played here because we have an unbelievable heritage. Uh, we want everybody to be a part of that. And so for us, it's about extending our, our reach, reaching out, building relationships. Um, and because that is a strength of ours, is our, is our past. But I think our, our future is just as bright. Stuart, I'm back on you. Troy, based on your conversations and the interview process, what is your understanding of how you will be able to use the transfer portal and do you plan to be active in it during this cycle that's already underway yeah i mean we we're competitive we want to um, have every competitive advantage we can and bring in great players that being said they got to fit with what we're looking for in student athletes that that will not be compromised so um the great news is there's plenty of great student athletes out there that are great football players and highly motivated um, and so uh, 
you know, I think we're open to the transfer portal, but we're going to make sure it's the right fit and the, the players fit in here and continue to, to keep the integrity of the institution in a, in a strong place. Troy, as far as uh, assistants go, uh, you know, you've got Chris, Andy, and Bobby all down in the mix for your old job, and there's discussion that they, that they kind of want to stay together. Have you given any thought or consideration to whether or not there's going to be people that, that come with you from Sacramento here, and what will that search for the ones that do decide to stay and you'll have open positions here? Going to well, there's up? those three that you mentioned are in, uh, extraordinary coaches. Sacramento State leadership with Mark Orr and President Nelson and, and those three individuals, hopefully one of them will, will be uh, the new head coach, will be extraordinary. Um, considering everybody there, um, you know, again, we're trying to give our players, our student athletes, the very best, and there's some really good coaches there. Now, that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm looking everywhere to find the best coaches uh, that fit with the profile of, of the things that I mentioned. Um, and so uh, we'll, I'll, I'll spend a lot of time on that. I take it very seriously. There's, there's nothing more important than um, the assistant coaches who are going to be interacting on a daily basis with our players. In a lot of ways, they're a big, huge part of their experience. And so we want guys that are positive um, and demanding, um, detailed, very creative, um, are able to push our players to their very best, but do it in a way uh, that builds up their confidence. So um, if they fit in, you know, I'm willing to look anywhere to get the best people here that, that fit with Stanford because it is a unique place. Um, the, the amount of people that, that we reach out to as for student athletes isn't going to be as wide and varied as a lot of places. Um, but the draw is incredible for Stanford. You can walk into any high school in any home and, uh, they're going to be drawn to the to the Stanford identity and experience, I think. Um, and I think I'm a big believer that like attracts like. So whatever you are and extend out there, it will draw that that type of uh, student athlete in. And that excites me. And I think that's honestly a strength of Stanford is it attracts those types of student athletes. We'll go to Ben next, and then we'll have time for one final after that. Uh, hey, I just want to kind of get one more uh, question in here. Just uh, on you know, reactions from other coaches at Stanford, just how, how has that been so far? Um, one of a legends right in front of me here. Um, just Stanford's got a very, you know, close knit athletic community cross out coach. It's just what kind of reception have you gotten from your fellow coaches so far? Unbelievable. I mean, getting a text message from Tara is, is pretty surreal. Um, admired her for a really long time and, um, not just the winning, but how she goes about doing things. And, it's incredible, and um, I've already requested to pick her brain, and she was she's open to that. I think <laughs> um, there's so many extraordinary people here at Stanford. Uh, Condoleezza Rice is a person that reached out and is in support. That's surreal for me. Um, and then the many student athletes have been here. Incredible faculty. So I'd be really not a very sharp person if I didn't try to learn from all the wonderful people that love student athletes and um, know how to lead and be successful, um, those are, I'm going to wear those people out just talking and picking their brain, and I'm really excited. We have a, a resource here on this campus that is unbelievable, the brightest and the best in the world. So um, I want to utilize all those resources and learn as much as I possibly can because, again, Stanford is a unique place. Time for one final, if there is one. Troy. Clock ticking for uh, recruiting as uh, it's an early signing period begins on the 21st. I'd imagine that's on the to-do list. What's yeah. on your to-do list for the next 10 days or so? Yeah, so um, you know we have a commitment to all the student athletes that committed to Stanford. Um, we're we're holding that commitment. We're standing by that. Um, you know when they when they committed to Stanford to be a student athlete, and it's all verbal. But when they committed, they 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 jumped in the boat. They became a Stanford Cardinal, and so we're really excited. So reaching out, I'm going to get on the road and be able to to see them, see their faces, and look in their eyes. And um, and the great thing about Stanford is um, uh, those those players that committed. I wasn't the head coach when they committed, and they still want to be a part of this program. So that shows you how powerful Stanford is, and then also how sharp the the, the student athletes are to make that decision. Uh, now there's change that has occurred and, it, and occurs in college football. Um, so my job is to make sure they know who I am and what I stand for and that uh, they're still welcome into our program and then just continue to recruit them and remind them of why they originally chose Stanford. Okay, thank you everyone. Great, thank you. Thanks brother.